the theorems and the postulates. This is um, Masonic Geometry from phoenixmasonry.org. Fellow crafts receive several admonitions and exhortations regarding the sciences of geometry and astronomy, and many an initiate has wondered just how far his duty should carry him in undertaking anew the study of branches of mathematics which are associated in his mind with much troubled effort in school days. While some mathematically minded men find the same joy in the study of lines, angles, surfaces, spheres, and measurements which the musician obtains from his notes, the painter from his perspective and colors and the poets from his meter and rhymes comparatively few brethren rejoice in the study of the mathematically abstruse. This must have been as well known to Preston when he wrote those portions of our fellow craft degree which we owe to his genius as to any modern. So it seems fair to conclude that it was l less the literal study of geometry with desi design to become an expert than a figurative appreciation of its implications which the great master of masonry had in mind. Indeed, a careful and critical examination of the ritual which speaks of geometry and its child astronomy will demonstrate this. So these guys point out that what led to the astronomy was the geometry. Fellowcraft ritual in this country, with very few exceptions, straight back to Thomas Smith Webb. I'm quite familiar with the Webb family. Because of the variation which ritual committees, grand lecturers, and others have introduced, so that few jurisdictions are exactly at one as to what is the proper form. Our examination here will be based on Webb, his several paragraphs here quoted in succession through separate, although separated in his monitor, read as follows. Geometry treats of the powers and the properties of magnitudes in general, where length, breadth, and thickness are considered. From a point to a line, from a line to a superficies, and from a superficies to a solid. By this science, the architect is enabled to construct his plans and execute his designs. The general to arrange his soldiers, the engineer to mark out ground for encampments, the geographer to give us the dimensions of the world and all things therein contained to delineate the extent of seas and specify the divisions of empires, kingdoms, and provinces. By it also the astronomer is enabled to make his observations and to fix the duration of times and seasons, years and cycles. In fine geometry is the foundation of architecture and the root of mathematics. Astronomy is that divine art by which we are taught to read the wisdom, strength, and beauty of the Almighty Creator. In those sacred pages of the celestial hemisphere, assisted by astronomy, we can observe the motions, measure the distances, comprehend the magnitudes, and calculate the periods and eclipses of the heavenly bodies. By it we learn the uses of the globes, the system of the world, and the preliminary law of nature. While we are employed in the study of this science, we must perceive unparalleled instances of wisdom and goodness, and through the whole creation trace the glorious author by his words. Geometry, the first and noblest of sciences, is the basis on which the superstructure of masonry is erected. By geometry, we may curiously trace nature through her various windings to her more to her most concealed recesses. So what did they say? Geometry, 